It's been a while since I have sat down and made a video. To be honest, I have actually made a lot of videos that were more planned. And I have so many home renovation videos I'm still currently working on. But the current reality is that my life is in a really terrible place right now, both mentally and physically. I still have so many videos that I even filmed in like March that I still need to edit. And it's end of June right now. I'm not trying to make excuses. It's more that just life has totally just taken me and rattled me and flipped me upside down so many times that it's really hard to just stand on even ground and even just breathe sometimes. I just decided why don't I get out of this dark deep depression cave that I'm in by filming it. When I made videos in the past on YouTube I would often turn on my camera when it meant I had like things I needed to get done and I found that so productive and nothing else has ever replaced that for me. There's just something therapeutic about turning on the camera, watching other YouTubers doing either organize with me, clean with me videos, get out of a depression episode with me, many of these like body doubling videos out there, and I have ADHD, like it's just what I need when I'm in these dark times. However, I just felt like documenting my journey because I know that one day I want to look back at this and be like, wow, I overcame that. That is amazing. I found a meme the other day that's sad but true. It said something along the lines of, if this year has taught me anything, it's that if just as you think things are at its worst, it can always get worse. That's definitely what my life has been. I have a lot of, I have a lot of very complex topics that I want to share because I feel like I haven't really fully explained my situation. Like I'll vent a lot like on TikTok and on Instagram, but I feel like I'm just leaving out so many details because there's just a lot to share. And I'm even struggling to organize it in my mind, what is going on. But to summarize, we got into a car accident, I think end of March, beginning of April, I don't even remember. And I have mentioned that in some other videos before, but I didn't really explain how bad it was. Even though we look fine, like the aftermath has been hard, especially since it was traumatizing. Like it was really traumatizing. I thought someone died and it just really was one of those moments where I just like, wow, I can't believe we survived that. It's just been so many other things going on with like my mental health and my personal life. But most recently I was in the bar, I had an emergency surgery done a few days ago. So for those of you that have been a long time follower of mine, I'm talking like 2016, like way back in the day, I was hospitalized for having a rupture of ovarian cyst. I almost needed surgery. And that was like, it was so, bad like the whole experience was just absolutely traumatizing i still like to get sometimes nightmares from it because it's it was just such a traumatic experience for me i just recently went through that again a few days ago except it was so much worse the pain was even more unbearable and it was just the worst worst pain i've ever experienced in my life it was absolutely agonizing and it didn't help that i was getting spasms in my neck and my shoulders from my car accident at the same time because i was just throwing up so much so i had a ruptured ovarian cyst by my right ovary and it caused a lot of abdominal bleeding and I ha had to go into surgery so they could drain it out and I was even told that I might lose an ovary before I went into surgery so that was really scary to just make the decision on the spot when I had no time to think about it they're just okay we need to get you into surgery I think I at first presented like a choice but it wasn't really a choice I guess it was just more like here, let's sign, we need to get you in because we're worried on how much blood there is there. And there was over 600 milliliters of blood in my abdomen that they needed to drain out. My blood pressure is really low. It's like at 88 over 50 somethings. Getting up and doing stuff is really hard, but my doctor has instructed me to get up and do stuff even if I don't feel like it because it'll make my recovery faster and I really need to recover soon because we have a very important trip coming up. So it's just ugh, lots of anxiety and stress, but so sorry to convert that I think that's about two and a half cups maybe 600 milliliters corresponds to 2.53605 cups yeah so that's just blood that was 
all over my guts so yeah they need to do surgery to get all that blood out so my body needs to recover from that and not just that but the trauma your body goes through surgery and oh uh, and then the because it's that was like what four days ago that that happened pretty recently i as you can see i'm doing a lot better i'm avoiding taking my pain meds because they prescribe you oxycodone and i obviously don't really want to take that i took it once but i'm gonna try and not take it unless the pain is unbearable but i feel like i'm past the unbearable part now i'm just like at a uncomfortable and i'm like pushing myself even though it's really hard but th that's okay at least i'm trending upwards right now it's just not so great anyways although like the physical things like really sucked like with the car accident and getting surgery and just the pain from my ruptured ovarian cyst and just all the trauma from that almost losing an ovary can you imagine i was like prepared to be like okay might lose an ovary just at the time i didn't realize how big of a deal that was but looking back now i'm like that's a really big deal to lose your ovary but anyways besides that my mental health is still so much worse than any of that combined and it just really sucks to be on bed rest and in so much pain when you're also suffering with mental health like i actually before i went to surgery i actually legitimately wanted to die i just i was hoping that i didn't it was just that was just a big part of me that was hoping I wouldn't make it because I just really hate life. Um, and then I feel guilty about leaving my husband and my dog behind and any friends that care about me. And I mainly feel this way because I don't really have a family that cares about me because I haven't also announced this on YouTube, but I have so much more going on than what I just said. James is actually going to court with my dad at the end of July and that's been also very traumatizing because it's not just the court it's everything that's been happening James has a stalking injunction against my father and my dad has already violated and he should be arrested because he has violated but because he's in Vietnam he's either not arrested yet or not going to be arrested I don't know no one's telling us anything and I'm just constantly scared for our safety all the time who knows what my dad is capable of to hurt us and we use this against court against me. I'm like, I know you're watching this. I don't really care because if I don't tell people, I'm afraid something really bad will happen. Anyways, I don't wanna, it's really hard to cry with my abdominal pain. And I just, I, that was not the point of this video. This video was supposed to be me showing how resilient and strong I am and just taking little steps. I don't necessarily have a to-do list because I just have so much to do that it's overwhelming. Like just my, entire house i have let it get out of control for a year now everything in my life is just out of control there's no order there's no peace there's no structure there's no routine and i need all of that and i'm not yeah it's just hard for me to do anything so let's start off by having a cup of coffee okay so you're probably hearing some music because i'll show you oh it's my stomach but my house is such a mess this is what i'm talking about but i discovered this in 2020 it's just called like virtual scenery on youtube and i'll just look up coffee shops and usually you'll play some like relaxing i don't know piano or jazz or lo-fi lo-fi beats in the background while you look at this animated background i try to do that when i'm trying to set myself up for a better day for my neurodivergent people or anyone who just likes any like productivity app I would recommend downloading the app called Productive. It's a habit tracker, so my stats are like really bad, but that's okay. I decided to let go of that idea of being perfect where I have to do these habits every day and have a streak. So instead, I see it more as like a tally instead of a streak system when you do break your streak i don't know about you guys but i get pretty depressed and down on myself so i rather just see it as a tally so if i miss a day here and there like it's fine and these days it's been like weeks but that's okay because now we're adding more tallies that's a better way of looking at it so i have these different habits that you can either do the ones that they recommend or you can make your own in the mornings read a chapter of something because that actually gets me off my phone so that way i'm not like just getting all my dopamine from scrolling on tiktok and instagram i'm a kindle girly i usually like to read a chapter from a self-help book there's a book i started last year but i have not gone around to it until now i did read a little bit of it in january but then to be honest it's been a long time since i've read this book so this is the book that i'm reading the mountain is you by Brian weist yeah the same name i'm just going to restart this book because it's actually been a long time 
since I've read it. I feel like with self-help books or just any book, it's better to just start over from the beginning. I can tell it's actually been a while since I've read because I had to keep rereading the same sentence over and over and over again. I just decided to mute that just in case I got copyrighted. My hair is such, such a mess. So I just wanted to reflect back on that chapter. Does anybody else get this way where they read something and they just forgot what they, everything that they read? But so, subconsciously, I know that I'm thinking about it. But I just read the intro and my biggest takeaway from the intro is determining like what my mountain is. But I feel like the book is trying to say, oh, you have a mountain that you're trying to overcome. But for me, I feel like I have this complex range of different peaks I'm trying to overcome, not just a mountain, because that also doesn't make sense. Like it's never just, okay, here's the bottom of the mountain, here's the top. And I feel like with my issues and problems, it's very much the same. So I guess anytime the author says time to come up with ways to overcome the mountain or when she's referencing to the mountain. I'm just going to think of it as like a mountain range. She was basically just talking about how you usually want to overcome your mountain when you're at your rock bottom. And I disagree with that a little bit as well because I feel like not everybody has a rock bottom. Like I feel like I've had lots of different rock bottoms that were all like different. I just feel like certain things in self-help books make me roll my eyes a little bit because I'm like that's not it for everybody or that's cool that's worked for a lot of people but for some of us especially learning that I have complex CPTSD rock bottom is a million different places it's never just one although I have been at rock bottom many times it's not this absolute like worst place I've been in my life the book tells you must mourn the loss of your younger self and I definitely feel myself going through that because so I don't know when like the peak in my life has been because in a lot of ways it felt like the last few years were but they also weren't and then also when I lived in Singapore like that was definitely like such a peak in my life where I got to travel all the time I did lots of cool fun exciting things and although I miss that version of me a lot the one that I got to travel and had lots of fun exciting adventures I also wouldn't want to go back to that place in my life because I feel like that chapter has closed. I mainly just look back on the memories and be like, wow, that was like awesome. I'm so glad that I got to experience all that. But I don't feel this need. Oh, I wish I was back at that place again, if that makes sense. But I am mourning the loss of my younger self. And that's the version of myself that I'm mourning because I had like life wasn't so hard. I didn't have so many as many like crazy things happening. And I was very much in denial about my trauma and the things that happened to me. And I wasn't aware of what's going on. And I was still suffering a lot. I'm not, I was not suffering nearly as much but I was still suffering. I just had no idea why I was suffering back then. Like at least now I know why. I like the part where it says your mountain is the block between you and the life you want to live. Facing it is the only path to your freedom and becoming. I completely agree with that. It inspired me a lot to think about like who I want to be and visualize a little bit like the mountain range in front of me of some of the hurdles I'm ready to face and never be the same person again. And just learning to be courageous and resilient and that what I'm trying to demonstrate through this video that although there's been a lot of really terrible things, I don't want to dwell anymore. I'm still going to dwell, but I want to take at least a step, a baby step. If you want to dwell, I think you should be allowed to. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, don't dwell on it, move on. No, cry about it. Take all the time you need to just cry about it or do whatever you need to do. That's healthy. But honestly, like, I get it. If you need that time and space, like, I get it. It's okay if you don't want to get better because whatever you're going through, like, I'm sure you have your reasons and I'm sure it's really hard. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I understand. Okay, Latte, what should we do next? Okay, I just marked off that we read. Okay, now I think... We will meditate and then I will brush my teeth, do my skincare and do my cold plunge that helps with my anxiety.
Let's do a meditation. Would you like to meditate? Let's do a meditation for resilience. I think that would be really great. Okay, my focus is really bad, so we're just gonna do a five minute meditation. Maybe we'll do this meditation here. Oh my gosh, my hair is such a mess. All right, be honest with me. Do you think meditation really helps? Personally, me, I think it does, but sometimes it makes things worse. Marking off that we meditated. If you're interested which meditation I did, I will go ahead and link it below if you wanna do it. I'm gonna be honest, my mind was wandering so i wasn't paying attention for a good half of it that's okay it's been a while since i've meditated i know if i keep practicing then it gets easier to meditate my mind wanders like a lot less okay sorry i'm feeling lightheaded lethargic and out of it i think that's from the surgery obviously and losing all that blood so if i'm not really making any sense or just seeming like i'm really out of it that's probably why because i'm also not on any meds except for ibuprofen and then oh and my regular like mental health meds i think we're going to brush my teeth next or no let's actually do the cold plunge next okay three rounds of 10 seconds here we go we need to pour some of this out actually okay this is not gonna work i am making a big mess Okay, let's try this again. Three rounds of 10 seconds. Here, Tara, here we go. Okay, let's read this while we're waiting. Let's see. It helps to relieve anxiety by activating the body's mammalian diving reflex. And according to the internet, it can also help relieve nausea and hangovers. Oh, you know what? When I was in Vegas for a birthday party, like a few weeks ago, like we went all out. I didn't drink a whole ton because I can't with my meds, but I still kind of felt like I had a little bit of a hangover. It was probably more from like a lack of sleep, but I did do an ice plunge the next morning because I just needed to wake up. I was like, caffeine's not gonna do it. And yeah, I started feeling a lot better. Main reflex consists of breathing, apnea, a dramatic slowing of heart rate. Oh, okay. I don't think we should lower my heart rate actually. So let's just go ahead and skip the other two for today. That's all right. But if you didn't have any surgery and major blood loss, then I would recommend that you do this. But yeah, the last thing I need is to feel even more lightheaded. So let's let's not do that because I'm trying to bring up my heart right now. Good thing I read that. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and put this back in the fridge and then we're just gonna move on. For those of you that are new to my channel, don't ask me why I have a fridge in my living room. But if you're wondering, I'm renovating my kitchen and this is my old fridge for my old kitchen. And so it's been moved in here temporarily while we wait for our kitchen to be renovated, which is literally taking us like over a year. So it's a constant state of chaos around here. Let's go ahead and brush my teeth and uh, do my skincare. Okay, I'm in anti-social mood. So I'm just gonna film voiceovers while I'm doing things, but I'm gonna listen to a podcast. So that's what my therapist told me to do while I'm doing things to listen to a podcast or an audiobook. So that way I'm not just like stuck ruminating since I have a big, really big problem with ruminating. I'm just gonna finish this episode from the pursuit of wellness. Mari, a lot of people know who she is. She sells the Bloom products at Target and yeah, she's like really well known, but she has borderline personality disorder as well. So it's just nice to know that there's like other people out there who are successful and also are still like living and breathing with this mental illness because it is the worst mental illness to have. So this is a screenshot of the podcast if you want to save it for later. I highly recommend it if you either have BPD or you want to learn more about it because her story is very interesting. So I was just listening to that while doing my oral hygiene, washing my face, and doing my skincare, including retinal serum and CeraVe sunscreen. This is the next podcast I listened to from Back from the Borderline. It was just recently Father's Day, so this podcast could have not come out at a better time. It's called Daddy Issues, Recognizing and Healing the Father Wounds. If you also struggle with a lack of a father or you just don't have a good relationship with your father, I would really recommend listening to this because it soothed me. Then I made myself a pretty embarrassing and unhealthy lunch, but oh well. As you can see in the background, my kitchen is still being renovated for more than a year actually. Wow. All we have to make meals with is a air fryer and a microwave. So I'm just having some vegan chicken tenders and some french fries in the air fryer like I eat almost every single day. While that was cooking, I decided to use this opportunity to pick up around the house a little bit. It is pretty cluttered and kind of gross. I've been in my depression era way too long. I just got a setting phone call. My psychiatrist's office called me to let me know that my insurance has rejected my next round of they haven't said, or maybe they did give a reason, just the person who called me couldn't find it, like the letter explaining why. And, or 
It could be that my phone number has changed. I initially signed up to do spirovalu treatments doing S-ketamine therapy via nasal spray. Inside a nasal spray has the S-ketamine molecule instead of regular ketamine will have R-ketamine and S-ketamine. So it's like a synthetic version, but still ketamine and it's supposed to help treat my PTSD and trauma and to be honest it hasn't been like that effective yet but it's also because my psychiatrist says that I've just been in such a deep dark depression hole that it's gonna take a lot of climbing to get out of. For some people who aren't as deep as me in the depression, they're able to see results after one time. And spravado is not as effective as like an IV or the shot. A lot of studies that people who get the shot, like even after just one time, like they're just like in a really state of depression after one time, they just see amazing results. However, it's not FDA approved, which means it can't be covered by insurance. That's not really the route I want to go down yet. That's just like a lot of money to spend because I don't even know how much it is. Because currently my Spravato treatments, I think are about a thousand dollars. But then with my insurance, obviously I'm not nearly paying that much. I'm pretty bummed to find out that my appointment is canceled on Monday because my insurance didn't pre-authorize it, they denied it. So I'm wondering if it's because my phone number changed. I was on my mom's plan all these years, but because we're no longer in contact, she just brutally cut me off, which whatever, it's fine. I'm an adult, I can pay for my phone plan. But the part that's really frustrating is that she would not release the numbers and I'm not sure if she did that intentionally to try and hurt me or if she just didn't care how this affected me. Either way, can you tell I have beauty? I just really fucking hate my parents. I hate both of them with a passion, including my stepdad. So it's just like really frustrating that they're getting in the way even of my spravado treatments. I never went on my own plan because it was just cheaper to go through them and James and I were under their plan and we were Venmoing them. Oh, I want to get a different sauce. I got barbecue sauce, so I'm gonna get sweet Polynesian. I can see that they're starting to help finally because I've done, I think, eight sessions now. They're like just barely starting to work because the first, I don't know, four sessions, it was terrible. You like my healthy meal? It's a vegan fried chicken and crinkle fries with some barbecue sauce and Chick-fil-A Polynesian sauce. Very healthy, very nutritious. But yeah, I was really upset to find out about that news. Like I'm still taking it in because I feel like, oh cool. Here's another thing that the universe is throwing at me. I just feel like I have so much against me sometimes that it just like really sucks. And I don't know, I think because of my BPD, I logically can comprehend that I have a distorted perception of the world that the way I see the world is more negative and out to hurt me, right? Because that was my reality in my childhood. I literally had full grown ass adults out to get me. And I'm talking about my father. Like, that's just pathetic. How can you be a grown ass man, an adult, and you're going after just a little girl? That's your daughter. It's just really sad. I've just gone through my life assuming that people are out to hurt me. And I know now logically that's not true, but that feeling carries with me. So anytime something bad happens, I feel like it's intentional. And I'm trying to tell myself that's not true. Honestly, it just does not help. I think for most people it helps, but for me it's, but that doesn't fix how I feel. But what does help is asking myself, is that a hundred percent true? Is there even just like a little bit of it that's untrue? Is that the absolute truth? Do I know that for sure? And then I loosen up a little bit and then I'm like, no, it probably wasn't like totally intentional. I'm taking a step down now from going, yes, that was completely targeted at me. It was planned and manipulated out to get me. Now I'm at the stance of maybe that's not the case. And that's progress right there. And I'm just gonna celebrate that because overcoming just mental health stuff in general, you have to celebrate all the small wins. And so this is me celebrating a small win. Uh, my insurance isn't out to hurt me specifically. It just feels like a personal attack, right? But yes, it hurts and I'm allowed to be hurt because that's really unfair that it's just so difficult to get mental health care and just healthcare in general in this country. I have it actually really good compared to other people, but still, even though I have it like really good, it still sucks. I just have so much more empathy for other people who don't have the privilege to be able to get mental health care. And I will always fight to the day I die to be an advocate. When I'm in a better place mentally, I will do something, whatever that is, because I want to be a voice for the small voices, because we need an entire reform. We just can't 
continue going on this way. We just can't. It's not sustainable. Anyways, I'm going to eat my lunch and then continue on my to-do list. I have now overstimulated myself with that phone call and then feeling a little bit hungry. And I just want to get back to listening to my podcast and continue on with the day. But hey, at least I'm not going back to bed and crying. So that's making some huge steps today. So that's really good. Speaking of which, I take Adderall, like a quick release Adderall in the afternoon, as well as like a extended release in the morning. Helps with my ADHD symptoms, but these days, because I've been such a dark depression hole, I don't really find that my meds are working that well. Except I did go through a withdrawal the last few days because I didn't start taking it since my surgery since this morning. And I noticed the last few days how the withdrawal has affected me, like just how tired and my brain was like so much messier. Maybe not busier, but messier than normal. I like the quick release Adderall more because I, it punches me more, if that makes sense. I feel it more suddenly than like the extended release. So then I just quickly ate my lunch and then I finished the organization that I started earlier. Normally these are my morning habits, spend nine hours in bed, read, brush and floss, take my pills, meditate, journal, wellness cards and books. It's all my like little workbooks I do. If you follow me on TikTok, I talk a lot about them. And then, okay, so this daily question to James, it's something that I think from one of our relationship workbooks we're doing, we try to ask each other every day, what can I do to make your life easier today? I obviously skipped that today, not because I didn't want to. I haven't really interacted with him much today because I got up like a lot more, a lot earlier before him. And then he just woke up right before work. I also skipped yoga for obvious reasons. Cold plunge, I mean, you saw I skipped that as well. And then skincare. And then the afternoon or any time in the day to go for a walk. But now because it's summer, I try to do them in the evening now, but I think I'm just gonna put on some sunscreen and go for a walk anyways. And then train latte for five minutes, track my expenses. I set up this habit at the beginning of the year and I've maybe only tracked my expenses like once or twice, but that's a habit I want to implement. I'm just not in the place for that right now. Respond to a message because I'm super ADHD and depressed and I don't get back to my messages. I try to drink two water bottles a day. Quick cleanup where I set a timer for 15 minutes and I just clean up. I already did that today. Tell James appreciation. So basically just telling him something I appreciate him for, which sometimes it's just a text because I'm afraid I'll forget later. But then I have some other ones that are a little bit silly. I don't know if silly is the right word, but look pretty. That means like putting on my makeup, maybe doing my hair, dye my eyelashes and eyebrows, do the laundry, post three TikToks a day. I know it sounds like a lot, but some TikToks I swear only take five minutes to make, so... I try to make three a day. Actually, maybe before we do my afternoon habits, I had this quick TikTok idea where I was going to screenshot some episodes related to BPD that have really helped me. And I was just gonna screenshot those episodes, maybe make it into a playlist. So then I have a link and then post it on TikTok and have people like go into my link tree and hit the link. <laughs> Not me thinking I will only be 10 minutes and it was two hours to make those three TikToks. And then I just quickly send James a text letting him know that I appreciate him. And then I finally got ready to go on my hot girl walk with Latte, of course. We're gonna walk Latte. The UV index is at its highest right now. So I wanna make sure we're well protected. Oh, let me show you guys my surgery marks. So my stomach is still super bloated. So even wearing this skirt that's like normally really loose, it actually hurts. Here, my belly button is starting to bruise because they did a cut inside there and here. I also have a cut right there. Let's just try and go for a walk anyways. Or a little hot girl walk. Okay, let's put some sunscreen on. Oh no, this is the broken one. Oh, I really should here. I'll just lay the towel I use for the gym on the ground for now. So the day of two days after my surgery, my doctor called me to see how I was doing. And he actually even told me to go on walks and move my body even if I don't feel like it. So that's what I'm doing. I don't feel like it. I don't feel that great, but we're gonna do it anyways. Because, oh my goodness, I never told you. That's because I never update you guys on YouTube what's going on. But James and I are going to Brazil in a couple of weeks for his 30th birthday. I can't believe he's turning 30, it's crazy. But yeah, we were really excited to go to Brazil because we only just booked this trip like not that long ago. And of course, I ended up in the ER. But you know what, I'm glad it happened now because even if it feels like a few days later, I feel like like, ooh, I don't know if I can do a 15 hour flight. I'm just hoping that this is the time because we've been upgraded with first class a few times. 
which is nice, but in the US, upgrading the first class is actually really lame. It's not that cool. It's more like the international really long haul flights. We've been upgrading the first class for either short flights or on planes that are like super old where the seats are not even like that comfortable. And like, you don't even get lounge access sometimes in first class. I'm like, really? Because they're like, you need to be international. Like, okay, it's really stupid. I'm looking forward to going to Brazil. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're going on a slightly off season as well, but that's all right. That's why we're going, because the flights were actually relatively cheap compared to other destinations. Because we have been wanting to go back to Singapore for a long time now, but just every time we look at flights, we're like, yeah, we don't really <laughs> want to pay that much. And then, We've also noticed that the price of things in Singapore just went way up. Like anything from hotels to even the hawker food. I was surprised. I still follow some friends like on Instagram that still live in Singapore and sometimes they'll post the prices. I'm like, whoa, I remember you couldn't even really spend more than $5 for a meal at a hawker center unless you're like a lapa or something. But I'm just like surprised that something basic will even be like five, six dollars now when back then but it used to be like you could get a meal like chicken and rice for two dollars like it was possible i okay i'm pretty sure i even saw under two dollars sometimes at some stalls so like you just can't be oh my god that's disgusting we're having a silverfish problem they're so disgusting i hate silverfish oh great i don't want to get sunscreen all over my skirt but i did because it leaves like oil stain oh, okay i'll probably have to wash the skirt when i get home okay yeah, so I'm not getting that much done today like I wanted to because I did procrastinate with my TikTok. That seems to happen to me a lot. Like, I'll be wanting to make a video and then it's just filming, editing, like whether it's for TikTok or YouTube, it takes me so much longer than I anticipated. And I'm not sure if it's because I've just been so unproductive for so long that I don't know how to manage my time or if it really is my ADHD, like I just never know. Let's go do my hair so then it can fit in this visor nicely. And then we'll go get Latte's leash. Latte recently got a new leash and I'm excited to try that out. Get some sunglasses. The bigger, the better. I'm just gonna brush my hair, get ready ready to go and I'll see you guys on my walk and I guess when future Brianna is editing this video you're gonna listen to my voiceovers. So, see ya. So I just brushed my hair and put it in the braid and I packed up my fanny pack. It actually holds a lot. I got it off Amazon. I can leave the link for it down below. I love it so much. And I put my adorable Korean inspired visor on. I don't actually know if it's Korean or not. I just see all the Korean girls like on Instagram and TikTok and Pinterest wearing this visor. So, fit check. So the bra and skirt are both from Target. Aren't they so cute and neutral for healing girl summer to go on our hot girl walks? Of course, wear a visor to protect your forehead. I live somewhere really hot with a lot sun latte wanted to make a guest appearance okay so i just drove to the park when normally this is only a five minute walk from home i drove because it's a really steep decline going to the park and i'm worried that because of my surgery and stuff i won't be able to make it back up the hill I just decided to make it a little bit easier for myself. So we went to a nice shady little park in our neighborhood and a little latte's gonna go for a little walk. Look how cute her brand new pink leash is. It's also a slip leash, which means you don't attach it to a collar so she can go collarless. And look how adorable this tiny little keychain clip on treat coin kind of purse thing is. It is adorable. I can store her little treats in there whenever she's been a good girl, which is all the time. And then, you know, it was nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So what is that, like 40 Celsius? And it just occurred to me, oh no, I don't want her paws to burn. So I touched the ground and yup, that is too hot for her little feet. So we're just sticking to the cool green grass and mostly staying in the shade because I don't want her to hurt herself. So I continued listening to that podcast because it was really long. I think it was like two hours or even more than two hours. So I was just vibing and enjoying my time. I didn't get to walk for too long like I normally do, but I'm at least going for a walk like my doctor has been urging me to. Honestly, just being outside and sitting on the bench is just good enough as well because then I get some vitamin D and some sunshine. And plus, a little latte is happy that we're outside too. She loves going for walks. As someone who tends to be a perfectionist and I'm trying to overcome that struggle I've had basically my whole life for as long as I can remember, I always had to be someone 
one to go big or go home. Like if I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna go all out. Every aspect of my life was in this way, but now I am changing things and I'm telling myself that something is always better than nothing. So even if you just go outside just to take a deep breath, that is good enough. After the walk, I decided we will do the training at the park because I'm trying to train her to have better manners off leash. So she was off leash the whole time and she was such a good girl. But when treats are involved, it's pretty easy to get her to come back and, and to do as I say. But Latte is ultimately the queen of our household, so she gets to do whatever she wants and we just worship her. Some lemonade. I'm not supposed to be having vitamin C with my Adderall, but considering it's 4 p.m., that's fine. I deserve it because it flushes the Adderall out of my system, but I'm okay with it doing that. I just really wanted some lemonade. And then I took a lot of really cute photos and videos. One of the videos I took, I'll turn it into a little outfit of the day TikTok. My outfit of the day videos do really terribly on TikTok, but I love making them. I do TikTok for me. I think I'm gonna go lay down because I think that was a little bit too much excitement with everything I've done today. I think I'm pushing myself a little bit too hard. There were more things I wanted to do, but that's okay. I think I'm just gonna lay down in a nice air conditioned room with my lemonade. And this is the guest bedroom, but I've turned it into my room for now. Yes, James and I have been sleeping in here lately instead of our regular bedroom. That's mainly because it's like dark and cold in here when our primary bedroom, it just gets way too sunny in the summer, even with the cellular shades. But the problem is, with the fan going, it moves the cellular shade. I imagine me laying down in my bed, and then you have a sun ray exactly where your eyes are. Yeah, and there's nothing we can do about it unless we don't have the fan going, then maybe it's okay. But even if there's just like the AC going on, it still moves it, and it's really irritating. Okay, I'm gonna go through the cute photos and videos that I took. I can't believe it's really close to 7 p.m. and it's still so bright as if it's noon. So let's have some dinner. I think I'll the same thing we can just figure out what else I should make. Just looking forward to when we finally get that kitchen done. Just while that's cooking, I'm going... What am I gonna do? Oh, yeah, I never made that tech. I need to go ahead and do that. I ate some dinner. Now I'm going to finally unpack my bags from Vegas and LA. I think that was... Two weeks ago, almost. Wow. But let's see if I can get it done in 15 minutes. So normally this quick cleanup is supposed to be for like bonus things, but you know what? I just have too much to clean. That's fine. So we're going to listen to a podcast or something and let's see if I can finish putting all those things away. There is a lot. We'll see. So a few weekends ago, I was in Vegas and then James and I went to LA just for a day after. So in Vegas, I went to my friend's 30th birthday party. It was so much fun and it was an overnight trip. But then since LA was on the way and James and I had a concert we had to get to on Sunday, the birthday party we went to, or I went to, it was on Saturday. So on Sunday morning, he came and picked me up in Vegas because it's on the way to LA to see my new favorite artist. Her name is Peach PRC. Well, her name's actually Shaylee, but she goes by Peach PRC. She's an Aussie pop star who also has borderline personality disorder. And she makes a lot of music about her mental health and just her mental health struggles. Although I can't relate to her specific stories that she talks about in her music, I can definitely relate to all of her feelings really deeply. Yeah, I never unpacked from that trip until now, like a few weeks later. And then I ate some dinner and I enjoyed the sunset on my balcony with a popsicle and I was just listening to some music. I was out here for probably about an hour, but then towards the end I actually had a little bit of a mental breakdown. Well, not really a breakdown. I was just kind of feeling sad how much has changed in the last year for me and I'm just grieving over a lot of things currently. But it was therapeutic, like I really needed that. So don't worry, it was a good cry. Sorry, had a little bit of a menti bee. I was just crying. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna watch Black Mirror now. The finale. Is it? I think so. Not signing off quite yet because I want to film my little night routine as well. Should I? No, because I want to eat ice cream and stuff. But I was like, no. Part of the reason why I did a night routine is so I can wind down for bed. Oh yeah, I was gonna go over what is my routine. Did I get everything I wanted to get done today? Absolutely not. Did I get a lot more than I thought I would? Yes, and I did a lot. Even though I didn't do like quite everything that was on my to-do list, I also did a lot of things that weren't on my to-do list. And to be honest, I just, who cares about if I don't finish my to-do list? At least I did quite a bit today. This is the most I've done in a long time. Sorry, my nose is still congested from crying. It's okay. 
I'm okay. I wasn't hysterical. I was just crying. Okay. So I need to do my five minute journal. I did do it this morning, but that was before I decided I was going to make a vlog. And then I'm going to take a hot shower, except okay, something awkward is going on my stomach. I'm getting a huge rash and the swelling is like not going down that much more. I'm not really sure why. So it parts kind of feels like I'm just bloated all the time. I feel like I'm on my period except times five. But as you can see, I'm having like a rash for me. Yeah, I'm not really excited about that. Okay, so then, oh, I guess I'll do that now. I'll make a plan for tomorrow. One of my friends is coming over in the afternoon. I'm really looking forward to that because I just need some social interaction and a big part of me just wants to push my friends away when I'm going through a hard time. But this time I'm like, no, let me just make the plans. I think we're gonna get takeout and maybe go for a walk. I'm not really sure. I should do some Amazon returns because I made an $800 order just to buy dresses for the Peach PRC concert and I only wore one of the dresses, but some of the other dresses are also really cute. So depending how inexpensive they are, I might keep a few more of those dresses for like other occasions in the future. But regardless, I have at least 700 something dollars worth of returns to make and I really gotta get on top of that. James, we should go to UPS tomorrow it's, so we can get nice. 700 and something dollars back. Oh, yeah, I have some oh, actually, yeah, I have at least $800 of returns because I still have something returned at Target and then Walmart. We'll see. I might not be able to handle all of that, but we can at least start with the Amazon returns. I guess tonight I'll just make a bunch of return codes for all the ones I already have like in a bag ready to go. I think I might as well just vlog tomorrow as well. I wasn't going to because I was going to plan on editing this video tomorrow. So that way I don't need to do both edit and film, but I think I'll film tomorrow as well because I'm in a productive mood and I've noticed my productivity goes up like five times. I hope that if you're engaging in this, you're using it as like a body doubling because I definitely engage in those videos on YouTube all the time. I love watching those clean with me videos because I'll just have them on in the background. There's just something therapeutic about someone doing the dishes and you're also doing the dishes. Why do you think people join group fitness classes? It's the same thing. I'm getting a scatterbrain. Also, my pupils are really dilated. I'm not high. That's apparently a symptom of ADHD. My parents used to accuse me of being on drugs when I was a teenager and I had to keep being like, I'm not on drugs. I'm just hyperactive and they'll be like, but your pupils are dilated. I'm like, I never took drugs. Okay. Okay. I did have marijuana a few times as a teenager, but the times they accused me would be like a year or six months without weed. So every single time they accused me, I was never high or drunk or anything, not even close. So it would really offend me. And then I have in the past when I made videos, a few times I would get comments, I'll delete them right away, but people would comment like, oh, your pupils are really dilated. I'm like, I don't know why, okay? But apparently it is a symptom of ADHD. I don't know why, but it is. And also coming off meds too, that can do that too. I am in the middle of switching meds, plus I was going through withdrawal the last few days. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked as you can see. Then I gotta do my skincare, brush and floss, pills, read. So it's really cute, James usually raids to me before we go to bed like he's my dad I'm sorry i had to make that joke okay, he's really angry with me are you angry or are you just embarrassed okay james doesn't get angry that's not true you get angry but it takes a lot to get there and then meditate two four six eight we're gonna meditate well, not right now but i don't know why i'm in such a good mood all of a sudden this happens sometimes after crying where i'm just like letting out all these tears i'm like whoa okay menti b is over now we're in mania i get mania almost every night that's really annoying but you know what i think i'm just feeling happy because i had a good enough day today so that's worth celebrating. Okay, let's uh, watch some Black Mirror. Did you notice that I organized here just a little bit? Not here, but. Yeah, is that good? Oh, no, like. Yeah, no, I noticed. I guess I'll start sorting through my Amazon returns now. You wanna help me grab this? Yes. I don't really have much data. Okay, let me show you the setup here. We brought my mirror from, the, from my closet upstairs. That's normally sitting all the way in the back. And then I have bags of Amazon returns. I have more upstairs. 
but I have a million things I need to try on. We're gonna watch Black Mirror and I'm gonna try things on and worried that my whole neighborhood, including you guys, are gonna see me nude. Great, I didn't think about that. Oh, I guess we can turn off the lights. Oh, no, I need the lights on actually. Oh, who cares? I'll be nude. I'll let go. I don't really care. If you see my naked body, it's I don't care. If you take pictures, I also don't care. I'm actually flattered. Is that weird? Like, I'm just, I just don't really find like that embarrassing because I'm just trying on clothes. Like, that's not a big deal. Like, everyone does that. Should I film myself using the bathroom too? Who cares? While we were watching Netflix, I was just trying on all of these different Amazon products that I got. And don't worry, perverts, I went by frame by frame and I blurred out anything that was even the slightest bit questionable. So don't you even try. Okay, but look what my dumbass decided to do. Well, it was an accident. I knocked over the mirror like a dumbass. There's my live reaction. So then we spent like the next half hour cleaning it all up. Because that's exactly what I wanted to do after midnight. Oh, okay. In case you didn't notice, but I knocked over over that mirror and it shattered everywhere. But yeah, I got on camera though, so hope you enjoyed that. That was not fun and now I'm in a lot of pain, but I really want to finish because I'm like so close. I just have a few more things to try on. So I'm like debating what to do. Watch my mirror or go upstairs. I don't know what happened, but it's the next day. I'm really tired, but I'll see you next time.